All right, Holy Trinity. So, it has been just under a year now since my family and I moved to Minneapolis. And it's been awesome. And we love it. But ever since we moved here, there is just one thing that I have wanted to change. I just want to be able to grow good green grass in the patchy areas of our lawn, both front and back. I'm being serious. It is, a, it's, it's been an agenda. I'm telling you, I've watched countless numbers of YouTube videos. I've had conversations with you guys. I've had conversations with the neighbors. I just want to be able to grow some good green grass. I've even recruited the family in on it, and sometimes they're full-blown, head of steam, ready to roll, and sometimes it's just like, Dad, let's just move on to something else. <laughs> but you know what? In my efforts to want to learn how to grow this good green grass, I, I've, learned, I've learned a couple of things. It's hard. It takes time. It takes effort. And I cannot, I cannot blame Sun and shade, scouts, seed drinks. I just, I can't do it. The seed works. The seed works. But what I've figured out is, is that there are certainly things that are in my control when it comes to trying to grow grass. But then at the same time, too, there are so many things that are out of my control. That's sort of what Jesus is getting at today in the parable that he gives us. On the surface, it's really just a simple parable about a growing seed. Really, that's it. Just a growing seed, right? But yet, at the same time, it's this parable about a growing seed in which Jesus gives us this cosmic, life-altering truth. It's through this parable that we hear this truth for us today, for humans. Human beings don't make seeds grow. We don't. We can't. It's just a, it's a God thing. And yet at the same time, in this parable today, Jesus combats this idea of rationalizing faith, of rationalizing what's going on in this heart by simply telling us that there is no one who knows how seeds grow. And yet at the same time, look at us. We've all been planted by the word. Look around. We get to see plants blooming left and right. In our story for today, we've got a farmer. We've got this farmer, and the farmer doesn't understand how seeds grow. And now if you think about it, it's, it's kind of ridiculous because his whole career is dependent on sowing seeds, right? That's his one job. And yet, as he's sowing these seeds, and as he's getting ready for the harvest, he has zero clue how germination and how seeds work. The reason why he doesn't get it, it's not because he hasn't been spending a bunch of time with seeds or soil or planting. No, it's because this is extraordinarily complicated. The vast majority of the world doesn't understand how seeds work. And yet, they grow all the time. The process of germination and seeds, it is so complex that all you can do is just cast them out and wait for God to do everything. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. And yet at the same time, it's extraordinarily complicated. And I'm not going to stand up here and act like I can teach the process of germination. I'm still trying to figure out how to grow green grass in my lawn. But what I do know is this. I do know that if I take a handful of sunflower seeds and I eat them, that there isn't gonna be a plant that grows inside of me. I know that. But if I take those same seeds and I throw them out, and under the right circumstances, in the right environment, and with the right amount of water, God's going to do something miraculous with that. He is going to make it so that that seed becomes a seed-bearing plant. Again, 
what I'm trying to get at here for all of us is this, that the world has no idea how this works. You look, and Jesus makes that very clear about the farmer in our, in our parable for today. No one knows how this works. And yet it happens. It's kind of like, it's kind of like electricity, if you think about it. All of us benefit from electricity. Day in and day out, we, we get home, and you turn on the light, and boom, we benefit from it, right? And yet at the same time, for some reason, many of us have zero clue how a process of current and electricity works. God does something special for us today. Does something special for the human beings in this building that have been planted by this word. You see, we don't know how seeds work, and yet we benefit from plants. We don't know how electricity works, and yet we benefit from light. We don't know how God's word works, but we benefit from it every single day. Because it does work. But you know what the natural thing that comes it's questions. It's the human being that says, well, I don't know how seeds work, but I benefit from it. I, I don't know how electricity works, and yet I benefit from it. And so I'm willing to say I don't know what God is doing in life right now. And so you know what? I am going to choose not to believe in him. I don't know what he's doing in my life right now. None of it makes sense. I, I'm not going to believe in him. But for the master the vast majority of us, for the world, for all of us, that is the complete opposite of the way that we work. You see, we're always putting our faith and trust in something. We always are. And you know what? Most of the time, it's ourselves. Most of the time, we put our faith in way too many things. <laughs> and when it boils down to it, it comes to well, if I don't know what God's doing in my life right now, I'm going to figure out what my life is doing right now. And I'm going to make it so that my life does what I want it to do. It's moving away from the truth that the seed does work, that the word does work, and completely transitioning into it doesn't work, but I work. Now take everything I've said this morning and realize with me this. That what Jesus is trying to teach us today, what Jesus is talking about today, he's talking about the evangelization process. He's talking about how Jesus, he has given us this word that works. And he's given us this responsibility to simply just take this seed and to throw it out there and to sow it, to sow seeds of faith in the hearts of so many people, right? Right? And yet, at the same time, while all of that's happening, we get to see how the God of the universe takes that seed and under the right circumstances, in the right environment, and with the right amount of power from the Holy Spirit, that seed produces something phenomenal in our hearts, in our lives, in the lives of so many. So while all that's going on, we shouldn't let the fact that we can barely understand how it works, how God's doing it, stop us from enjoying beautiful plants. While God is doing all of that, we shouldn't let this human brain and this human heart stop me from Seeing that I've been planted by the Lord, that you've been planted by the Lord, and that word, it works. This week, as I was looking through Mark 4, and I was studying it, and I was looking at it, I couldn't help but fall into that trap myself. I started asking my question, myself questions like, hey, how do I make this deep? How do, I, how do I preach this in such a way that people like walk out of here with re-energized, refocused faith? How do, I, how do I write a sermon that just hits their hearts, hits my heart, right? 
How, how do we do that? How do we spit it all out and make it so that God's people leave here knowing that this would have worked? And I realized after a while, after asking myself those questions over and over again, that really all I was doing was making it about myself. You see, the problem was at the very core of those questions, it was all about me creating and strengthening faith. It was all about me and my writing and my skill and, and my perception of what you guys would leave here with, right? What I would walk out of here with. Made it all about me, myself, and I again. Falling into the trap of forgetting that, that God's word does work. That God's word is the only thing necessary. That God's word is for you and it's for me. I struggled with this a couple of years ago, too. A couple of years ago, I was serving as a vicar in Queens, New York. Vicar, pastoral, intern, internship, whatever works. And as I was there, the congregation I was serving was a bilingual congregation, right? And so... That meant that on any given day, there, on any given Sunday, excuse me, there was an English service at 10, and then there was a Spanish service to follow at noon. The only problem was, in my head, as I'm just dreading over the fact that I have to preach again, the reason why I was dreading over it is because I knew, in my head, I was horrible at speaking Spanish. There was no way I was going to be able to do it, and no way I was going to be able to do it well. And I specifically remember there was this one sermon where I was trying to drive home this idea, this truth, that we were the ones that were um, nailing, nailing the nails into Jesus' hands, right? We were, we were driving them in. Except it wasn't until after the service that I figured out that the word I was using for nail was not the hammer and nail type, but it was the fingernail. And so during the entire service, I kid you not, that was happening. People laughing, people smirking, people looking around like, like did you look at the dictionary? <laughs> I remember leaving after that service, getting home, and just, just saying things to myself like, I messed it all up. I messed it all up. They, they weren't fed. It, it, I, don't even, I don't even know if the word worked. Here's what all of this means practically. Don't make yourselves responsible for the stuff that only God himself can do, like creating and strengthening faith. That's his job. But at the same time, don't let yourselves off the hook for the stuff that God has clearly made you and I responsible for like sowing seeds. Our comfort today is that the God of the universe, the God of our hearts, the one who rules, the one who we stand in awe of every single Sunday and God willing every single day, he is teaching us today that he's the one who's doing all the heavy lifting. He really is. He comes right down to our level and he sits down with us and he says, you know what? You are forgiven. You're forgiven for the times that, that you thought the word worked because of you. You're forgiven for the times that you doubted. You're forgiven for the times that you made it all about yourself. But now, now know this, that I will do the heavy lifting and to trust the process to trust the process, and you just keep scattering seeds, you scatter them to the Lord, and after all, remember, you've been planted by the Word. The reason that we're all here today is because we've been planted by that Word. We're all sitting here, standing here, we're all here surrounded by this seed, right? The Word that's been written down for us, Passed down from generation to generation, and for what purpose? For your hearts, for my heart, for salvation, for life after death. 
for our hearts. We're all gathered here because this seed was sown in us. And now look. Look next to you. Look to your left and your right. Look behind you. As you're walking out today, look everywhere. There are beautiful plants that have been planted by this word. A whole crop full. That is miraculous. That is God doing his best work. Don't forget that. Don't forget that it's Jesus' job to be the Messiah. It's his job to be the Savior. It's not ours. Don't forget that our biggest danger isn't watching the seed fail. No, we know the seed works. Our biggest danger as Christians is, is actually this. It is to forget. It's to forget that we've been planted by the word and not anything else. Our biggest danger is to forget that every single day we do and can stand in awe of what Jesus has done for you and for me. Our biggest danger is to forget that he knows every detail, every sin, everything in our lives, and he uncovers it all. There's no hiding from it. We all walked in here today, and it was on full display for Christ, because he can read the heart. And then you know what he does? He covers it all back up. He covers it all back up with his blood. Don't forget that. Don't forget that this word works. And it is for every detail and crevice in your life. Don't forget. If you're looking for something to be joyful or thankful about, look at the word that works. And he gives you a whole list <laughs> to be thankful for. If your heart is hurting today, if you are confused, if you are feeling lost over the trials and troubles that are just compounding in life right now, you know what? Look at the word, and I promise you, God will do something for your heart. He will tell you that your heart belongs to him. He will tell you that your heart is one in which he reigns. If you're looking for motivation, you're looking for motivation on how to live this life. If you're looking for proper motivation on how to carry out the tasks and just be about the business of all the different callings or vocations that God has given you, look at the word. It works. It's right then and there where God will give you the motivation you need, that I need, to do exactly what he calls us to. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget that it's right here. Where that same word is what he uses to remind us that we are forgiven. Trust in that. Trust in that and get out there and scatter the seeds. Anytime I struggle to remember that the word works, I usually go down memory lane and I think about one moment. I remember it like it was yesterday, and it was yet again in Queens, New York, and I was sitting down, waiting to go up there and preach my last sermon for the year before heading back off to seminary for my final year. And I was sitting there waiting, and we're singing the song, and uh, the craziest thing happened. I hadn't teared up at all that year, and I was just sobbing like a baby, just going. I was just here to the Lord. And I wasn't necessarily crying because it was going to be the, the last sermon that I preached in New York. It wasn't necessarily just because we were leaving New York at the time. But I remember it was for something specific and something else. I remember going up there and just standing in awe of this one truth. Like, how in the world? Why in the world? God's people, they sit there and they forgive me. They forgive this guy who's horrible at stage. They forgive this guy who, who gets so easily overwhelmed, who so easily doubts. They forgive this guy who 
who also needs to remember that the word works. <laughs> I cry because, well, it's a funny thing. I think God used that moment to teach me, to help me remember, to trust. To trust in his word that works. To trust in the process. To believe in forgiveness. To believe it for me. And then to go about the business of scattering that seed for others to see and hear and trust it too. All those truths, all those truths, we need to be reminded of it on a weekly basis. We all do. There's no right or wrong way to scatter seeds. You just do it. You just throw them out there. It doesn't matter how smart we sound as we do it. It doesn't matter what words we use when we scatter those seeds. We, we just take them and we throw them out there with the love and the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We trust it for ourselves first with God's help. And then we sow it in the hearts of so many who also need to hear.